Okay. Uh, can everybody hear us okay? Excellent. Right, let's get started. Yeah. Welcome to Thursday, the last uh, day of the conference. And uh, thank you for watching our presentation uh, about smart DBUs. So we're going to talk a bit about the enablement we have done in OVN and uh, OpenStack uh, in the yoga cycle. Uh, let's start with some introduction. I'm Frode. I'm an engineer in the OVN engineering team. And I'm, uh, I'm James, uh, and I, I work alongside Frodo in our OpenStack engineering team. Okay, so let's start to talk about OVN. What is OVN? Uh, OVN stands for Open Virtual Network. It uh, pr provides a logical network abstraction for virtual machines and container environments. Uh, it's an open source project with multiple contributors, and as such, there is no you know, single vendor behind it. Uh, it can be used with multiple cloud management systems, such as OpenStack and Kubernetes and LXD. Um, so why is OVN important in the context of a DPU? So uh, the core functionality of OVN is to take higher layer network abstractions from the CMS and transfer that into lower layer um, information that can be programmed directly into the data path. Uh, this allows for acceleration of everything from uh, layer three routing, ACLs, NAT, and even node balancing. Uh, the previous iterations of OpenStack networking, ML2 OVS, uh, is bound to the software data path and is not uploadable. Um, and today, 100 gig networking is, is in normal in the data center and people are already deploying 400 gig and the, the network industry is steadily marching towards terabit Ethernet. And in this world, you know, doing pure software uh, data path for networking just wouldn't work. You would just burn all your CPU cores for the network. Okay, thanks, Rhoda. Um, so let's just talk briefly about what we mean by a SmartNIC DPU. So uh, this is a network interface card uh, with silicon that allows us to accelerate the data path in, in hardware, but it also has additional cores and uh, uh, memory to run an additional operating system directly on the card, alongside the host operating system that's actually running within the server itself. Plugs in uh, via a PCI Express slot into, into the server, and we can really think of it as an additional server inside the server sitting right in front of the network. And as such, we're able to contr ha have control of all the networking to and from the server from a, a, a second control point within the infrastructure. Uh, not every SmartNIC has DPU capability. So um, for uh, uh, what we term a kind of classic SmartNIC, uh, we have to, have to push some of the, the control plane uh, for the networking directly onto the host operating system rather than having a dedicated operating system to run this on. So, um, in this example, uh, we're, we're having to run OVN and OVS alongside the workloads are on the, the host operating system. So they're chewing on the same sausage. They're eating the same cores and memory as all the instances that are running on so alongside them. So um, for, for, for an OpenStack hypervisor, we have the potential for contention of those resources between the control plane and the workloads in the form of instances that are actually running on the cloud. OVS and OVN can still program uh, all of the data path uh, directly into the silicon in this case, uh, so we get a, a hardware accelerated uh, set of interfaces to, to present to, to instances, and that's done via using uh, virtual functions in the same way as an SRIOV virtual function is presented, but that's a fully steered virtual function from, from the, the point of view of the software-defined networking. The host operating system is ch in charge of the resilience of the uplink ports on, on this type of card and uses the standard Linux bonding interface interface with the underlying network interface drivers to, to achieve that. When we introduce the DPU concept, we obviously have additional cores and memory uh, that can be used to, to run, uh, to offload some of the tasks that we've had to run on the host operating system before. So uh, we can push all of the network control function down uh, onto that operating system that's running on the card. So we, we can deal with the uplink resilience uh, via the bonding interface via the Linux kernel that's running on the card and a single physical function is then presented to the host for its networking. And we can, again, use OVN and uh, OVS to program the, the SDN side of, of what we're trying to achieve. And again, virtual functions are presented up and then plugged into instances using PCI pass-through. Key thing here is that our workload and our control plane are completely separated, so there's no potential for contention. So we can make much better guarantees about the latency of any up calls from the silicon to OVN OVS in terms of how quickly that is then programmed back down into the hardware. Um, I'm now going to hand you back over to Frodo, who's going to talk about how we achieve uh, this trick with the, and the coordination we needed to do in, in OpenStack and OVN to, to do this. Thanks, James. 
So what you see on this slide is an overview of, of the implementation. Um, on the, on the left-hand side, uh, you see uh, the data path components you know, with the DPU itself, where we run the OVN controller, uh, OpenV switch. And on the host side, you have the Nova Compute, which manages the, the virtual machines. Um, on the right-hand side, you see the control plane components. So you have your Neutron API, the Nova API, and of course, the central OVN databases. Um, and, and the implementation uh, was done in, in Nova and Libvirt um, to support you know, identifying the DPU to figure out you know, which DPU is connected to which host. And we do that by looking up PCIe DPD information, which is, Nova then provides to Neutron when binding, when, uh, binding the port. Um, Neutron, in turn, uses this information uh, to find out which chassis, this, which, which OVN chassis this port should be bound to. Uh, and then passes on uh, information about which virtual function, et cetera, to, to OVN. Um, and the OVN controller then, in turn, uses this information to look up the representative port on the DPU and plugs the representative port into the OpenV switch, and then, you know, networking can work as normally. Uh, and this is in contrast with uh, how it used to work, you know, when everything was on the host, where all of the components were running on the same machine. Um, all right. But instead of looking at more schematics, uh, we prepared a demonstration where we can see how this works with the OpenI Stack CLI uh, in action. So, so let's look at that instead. If the demo builds work. Yeah, I, I've pre-recorded it because, uh, yeah. But uh, we'll, we'll talk to what's here. Let's see. All right. So what we are going to show here is a, a Judy deployed uh, Charm OpenStack Yoga. Um, it's deployed uh, on metal uh, using NAS. Uh, and we, for, for the purpose of this demonstration, we only have two machines in there. Uh, so the, the first machine uh, named Amontons there uh, is the, a physical machine with the DPU in it. Um, and that machine, the, the only application deployed on that is a Nova compute, which we have called untrusted. Uh, this is just to demonstrate what the security use case for this would be. Uh, because since we're not running anything else on that machine, if somebody escapes the, the hypervisor, you know, they can't really get to anything because all of the control plane stuff is hung on a different machine. Uh, so, so the second machine there is uh, for regular instances. And we essentially deployed the entire OpenStack control plane in LXD containers on there. Of course, you wouldn't do it like that in production, but this is just to have a demonstration with two machines. The manual provision machine you see there is uh, the DPU itself. Uh, at this point in time, uh, MASS, our bare metal provisioning system, does not support automatic the, the provisioning of, of the DPUs. But until that is implemented, we can use the manual provider like this. Uh, and the MASS team is, is working on implementing a MVP for, the, for this. So we, we hopefully will have support for that uh, soon. Um, and uh, yeah, let's first we will create a, a regular instance uh, just to show how this scheduling works with you know the different types of computes in there. Uh, so this is just you know the, ba the basic server create command you would use. Uh, you see it's already created. Um, and if we go and look on the instance itself, we can see where it ended up. And it was scheduled to the machine called Node Mies, and this is the the machine without DPU, so this is for you know regular virtual instances. Um, and to confirm that that's the fact, we can add a floating IP and log into the instance as well. I should have made the video quicker. <laughs> <laughs> If we, if we look at, uh, yeah, you see this is a different machine. And here is a regular virtual interface. So just to confirm the plumbing. Um, and after this, we, of course, we can create an accelerated instance, which we'll do now. To, to create an accelerated instance, uh, you, you first need to create a port uh, with the VNIC type remote managed, um, like this, and, and then we create an instance and refer to that port in the instance creation command. This is 
the same type of workflow as you would do with uh, like regular SROV and also with uh, the hardware offload support. Um, but the diff difference is the VNIC type, of course. Uh, you can see that starting the accelerated instance takes a bit longer time. This is because Nova has to, you know, allocate a virtual function and uh, attach this to the instance, etc. Um, but let's see where it ended up. Yeah, it's ended up on the machine with the DPU, uh, so that's great. Uh, you know, you don't have to have special aggregates or do you know, special things to have the instances placed where they should be. There's, you know, three hints in Nova, which does the magic for you. Um, and this time as well, let's, let's uh, confirm that we're not just having smoke and mirrors here. Let's log into the machine. It looks like the plumbing looks like on the inside. <coughs> and if we do a LSPCI here, we will see that the networking interface is in fact a, a uh, virtual function on the NVIDIA Bluefield. So the next thing I wanted to show is uh, we'll, let's look at what this looks like under the hood. Um, so we have now logged into the, the hypervisor with the DPU. Uh, and as you can see on here, there is no open switch daemon, there is no OVM, there is no neutron agents, there's only Nova, and of course the key process for the instance we just created. Um, and on the flip side of that, we can log into the, the NVIDIA Bluefield 2 DPU, which is connected to this machine through PCI. And you can see this is an ARM system. Uh, so that's uh, the ARM core is used for the control plane functions on the DPU. Uh, and here you have the open switch. You have the OVM. And if you look at the, the log file for the OVM controller, you can see that it looked up the representative port and plugged it into the open switch part of the instance creation. And as it normally does, you know, when the instance boots up, uh, it provides DHCP to the instance, etc. cetera. Um, and, and what we can then do in addition to this, we can go into the instance and uh, generate some traffic uh, just to see what, what that would look like on the DPU side. So we need a MAC address because that's what shows up in the flow table. Um, and yeah, let's pin the Ubuntu archive. And this command here uh, dumps all the active flows in the system. And we also have a filter called offloaded. So, so this will only show the flows that are actually offloaded into the ConnectVex 6 silicon on the DPU. And there's the actual traffic. Um, so, and, and this, this is available in, uh, in OVM 2203 and the OpenV switch yoga. And it's, it's in the archive today. So uh, if you can get your hands on the DPU, you can go do this in your lab at home. Um, and you can also see the topology of the network agents, etc. You see there's no, no agents on the, on the hypervisor with the DPU. And uh, that concludes the demo. Okay, uh, thank you for listening. Uh, we have like one minute for questions. If you have a question, please come use a microphone so it gets on the recording. And if we run out of time, we'll be on the booth for the next hour upstairs, so you can always come and ask us a question if you've got something to ask. Uh, which vendors or which, you know, what smart NICs are supported initially? Yeah, that's a very good question. So um, we, we used uh, a Bluefield 2 from NVIDIA in our testing. But uh, we made it, you know, an important part of the design mm -hmm. we made is, is to use, you know, standard uh, interfaces to do this. So, so we, we use DevLink to do the lookup of the representative ports. And, of course, the interface between the DPU and the machine is PCI. So that's standard, virtual functions, et cetera. So, so if uh, a different vendor has similar layout, you know, with uh, the representative ports being looked up through DevLink, et cetera, it will also support that. Uh, and the, the component doing this lookup is called OVMDIF, which is a, a, a project hosted on the open org on GitHub. Uh, and if we need you know, to do additional things for different DPU, we, we could add support for that there. So it's, a, it's, a, it's created in a vendor agnostic way. For, have, it, have other vendors implemented these interfaces yet, or is NVIDIA the only you know, player in the space that has all the features together? 
So multiple vendors are, are doing this very similarly. Um, and uh, we, we chose to use the dev link part because we saw that other vendors had that in their kernel code. Uh, but it, of course, we haven't actually you know, tested those parts, so we, we won't know for sure if it works. But it, 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 everyone is you know, moving in this direction, so I, I feel pretty confident that this will, will work for, for all of the vendors. Okay, thank you. We are like out of time by over 30 seconds now. So if anyone got any more questions, we'll be upstairs, as I said, for the next hour. Thank you for listening. Thank you.